is and marketing department led by the sales and marketing manager who is on my left here, Ingrid Nyangoma. We also have a human resource department led by a human resource manager and the factory led by a factory manager. So we have four departments. The sales and marketing department has eight sales and marketing executives who act as the relationship managers. And each client is attached to a sales executive. So in our company, we have relationship managers to deal with each organization. On the next page, page two, on the 23rd of April, 2021, at exactly uh, 12 06 p.m., he signed the terms with the person concerned with uh, the means of trade and industry, received an email. The email is attached as index number five. If you go to page number five, you see that email. It's attached. You see the name from the Ministry of Trade through an officer called Mr. Achuera Tom with the two uh, RFQs, requests for quotation bidding documents, attached as index number five again. So you see those two uh, requests for quotations for furniture pro 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 uh, procurement with numbers, which are indicated there. 110 and 125. On that email, there were two procurement requests. Footsteps responded by, by, by a quotation dated the 30th April 2021, attached as index number six. Subsequently, we received an LPO, two LPOs. One is the number 3800 with a total of 39,800,000, and another one of uh, 3801, with a total sum of 17,900,000, all dated on the 16th of May 2021. They are also attached as index uh, 7 and 8. We received them on the 7th of June uh, through an email at exactly 15.30 p.m and 15.22 p.m. respectively for the supply of the trade furniture. As per our internal processes, we generated sales orders for the trade furniture, and the trade furniture was picked from our stores in Mukono, and we have a factory and a store in Mukono, based in Mukono, and this furniture was set for delivery on the 8th of June. We made delivery as per delivery note number People 1 6 and People 1 7, both dated 8th June 2021. They are also attached as index 9. We raised two invoices, invoice number 382 and 383, both dated 8th of June 2021, for the two amounts of 39,800,000 and one of 17,900,000 respectively, attached as index number 11. Uh, we can look at the invoices attached here. Okay. We are issued with a goods received note, goods received notes, two of them, for the said furniture. The goods received notes are 7, 750, 284, and 750, 285, both dated 8th of June 2021 for the deliveries. They are also attached as index number 10. Mr. Who, Chairman, if who, who received them, the goods? Index number 10 and members of, uh, honorary members of parliament, we, we go to this. We were paid. No, who received the goods? Yes, sir. Who received the goods? Uh, according to the goods received note, there is a signature of a one Mr. On page 10, Mr. Mr. Chairman, on, 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 on page 10, the signature is of one, of one Mr. Wambi R. And another one is of Monyo. I think it's uh, the assigned here clearly, sir. On the good receiving note and on our delivery note, sir.
on page 10. What are their titles? Job. Yes, sir. What are their job titles? Um, I'm not very clear about their job titles, sir. But they receive the function of the ministry, sir. Can I continue, Mr. Yes, Chairman? I can help the titles. Mm -hmm. uh, we were paid a total of uh, 54 million seven hundred and sixty-six one hundred and three on the 30th of June 2021 as per the attached statement, index number two, number, number 12. So we got a payment through our bank. The payment is indicated as index number 12 on our. You can see our bank statement, we received that money, 64 million seven hundred and six six one hundred and three. It was paid through our, our standard chartered bank account. For the total invoices, a list withholding tax of two million nine hundred and thirty three eight hundred and ninety-eight thousand. So they withheld tax from us totaling to two point nine million. On Monday the second of August twenty twenty one, on index number thirteen is our withholding tax certificate. Mm for this. So it was given to us and it's attached also. When I chairman and members, to our surprise, we received the letter from the Division CID officer, Parliamentary Police, uh, Deputy Assistant Principal Police, Finn Emancio Charles, with a subject saying alleged causing of financial loss, conspiracy, and abuse of office by the Parliamentary Police, GEF 32 Stock 2023. And report to Parliament Police Division for interview and statement recording on the 26th of July 2023 at 2 p.m. without fail. Subsequently, after that, uh, Request to appear. Our executive director appointed the sales and marketing manager, Mrs. Ingrid Noma, and her deputy, Mr. Rumbus Robert, to represent the managing director who was away at that time. And the two people appeared. They were interviewed, and Mrs. Nyangoma, uh, Mrs. Nyangoma Ingrid recorded a statement. And these two people went to report on my behalf. He recorded a statement, and uh, after recording a statement, uh, DSP Twino Mansio Charles, I can only receive over my letter, but he insisted that the managing director reports in person on 28th of July 2023 at 10 a.m. for interview and statement recording. The managing director reported, was interviewed and he recorded a statement. The statement and everything is with, uh, with the police ID. On the same day, after recording the statement, the managing director received a letter of invitation from the, for a meeting from the Krakow Parliament, this time addressed to not to Fusse of Furniture, but to Footprints Furniture Company Limited. He therefore wrote a letter to seek clarification whether the letter was addressed footprints for Intercamper Limited or to footsteps for Intercamper Limited in our letter dated 31st July 2023, attached as index number one. So the chairman thought that clarification. But with the above background sentiment made at CID, Division Parliament Police, and the letter delivered to our offices on Friday afternoon of the 28th of July 2023, from the clerk of the Parliament of the Republic of Uganda, address of Footprint Center Company Limited, we are without qualification, and because of limited time frame for the date of the meeting, we saw it necessary to appear for the meeting today, on the 1st of August 2023, as we were, we were called. 
In our appearance in this meeting, we seek to share a full submission of the Colonel John events with this list, as is in line with our, one of our core values for integrity and provision of quality products and services. I sign this off. Uh, my name is Kabi Frederick William, as the managing director. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is our list of submission. Uh, there is a table of contents can, uh, which clearly shows all the attachments and the indexes. Mr. Chairman, I beg to submit about all transferred uh, between ASA and, and the, the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and members. Thank you to Mr. Chairman. I'm Seru Gosula, General Manager, Nila Malt Concept Limited. We are located at Ibukoto. Uh, we received a letter yesterday on a short notice inviting us today to come and discuss about our contracts that were given, awarded to us by the Ministry of Trade. Mr. Chairman, sir, I can tell you that as Nila Malt Concept, we last worked with Ministry of Trade in 2020. Uh, we are pre-qualified suppliers with several government entities, among his Ministry of Trade, but we participate in the bidding process as a process, government process, how it's supposed to be. Of recently, we've participated, but we've not been successful, which is okay to us. <coughs> so on the short notes, not to waste the time, that's why we're here. And what we submitted, there are some few documents that we submitted. The first contracts that LOPOs that we got, that was in 2018 and 2019. Since then, we've never worked with the Minister of Trade. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Now, food, uh, food steps furniture. This one of the chairman. Hmm? Uh, do you have a copy of the best evaluated bid? So that the person who got the contract you should have. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, the BEB are the best evaluated bid document the judgment of the ministry, and uh, sometimes we get it, sometimes we don't get it. But uh, since you were given limited time, uh, we don't have it now, but we shall be tracking it. Didn't have much time. Okay. But we received, we received a, we received a, an LPO after quotation, and we know once we get an LPO. What was the, okay, was there a contract between you and the ministry? We got a local purchase order. The green LPO, which was sent to us, through if miss, and that one is a binding contract between the government and us, and we normally base all our supplies on on if miss. If you get that that LPO, Mr. Chairman, it confirms that you are free to supply. Okay. What was the total contract sum? Much as you have no contract, you don't have a 
the document of the best evaluated bidder. What was the total contract sum? One local purchase order date uh, number 3,800 had 39,800,000. And the second local purchase order number 3,801 had a total of 17,900,000. So when you add the two, you count 57,700,000. So out of these two, we were paid in one lot, we were paid 54 million, up and that <coughs> 2.9 2 million as withholding tax. Okay. So we got a, to a total payment to account of, as indicated on our bank statement, which we have attached, we got 54 million, 766. 103 million, sir. It's indicated in the bank statement, sir. Now, if that contract was around 50, you said 54? The Did two contracts totaled 57 million, 700,000. Then when they were paying us, they deducted government tax of 2.9 million, 333, something. Then the net pay became 54 million, 766, Then eventually we got our certificate, our withholding tax certificate, which we normally use at the end of our financial year to account for government tax. Do you have any work you're doing with the ministry? Outside of this? Yes. Yeah, we have work we do with the ministry, but for purposes of this meeting, Mr. Chairman, why did you address this today, Mr. Chairman? You may speak to me informally. If you don't have the documents, you can send them late. I'm sure the honorable members don't mind. Do you have any work you're doing with the ministry? Yeah, we have some work we are doing with the ministry, but we are not prepared with it as we came in today. What are you doing with the ministry? Uh, besides this, I think we, we expect to do a lot of business with them in the new structure, I think. But the documentation is not with us today. We shall come with it. So what are you supplying the ministry? We are basically supplying furniture only. Furniture? Only. As I said, we manufacture and we import furniture. So the, this new contract is a total of how much? Yes, sir. The new contract you have with the minister. Mr. Chairman, I need to get clarification about the total amount, sir. I'm sorry. Then I'll submit it, sir. Honorable members, questions? The delivery notes. There are two here. But I'm not seeing any stamp from the ministry receiving it. Whether there are signatures there, but person who received from the ministry, not seeing any stamp from the ministry. So, it's very difficult to know whether the ministry is the one who received this or not, because there is no single stamp, and even the second delivery note of 25 pieces of other items, there is also no stamp from the company itself, like the first one. Should we assume rightly? <coughs> According to what the Honorable is asking. Okay. Observation, Chair. On the the two goods received, goods delivery notes. 
uh, actually the first one is the one that is uh, stamped uh, by the by the company delivering the goods. The second one is not even stamped. Number two, I note that uh, the delivery note that is being submitted here is a copy of the original. And yet, in the, under normal circumstances, this original copy is supposed to be with the Minister of Trade, the receiver. The company was supposed to remain with a duplicate. That is a normal procedure. I am wondering how and why uh, footsteps delivered the goods to the ministry and remained with the original delivery note. If you check members, you will see that what we have from the company are the original copies of the goods delivery note. How does that work? Question. As you can note that the first delivery note has a stamp. This was dispatched from stores, so they had to put this stamp. The second one, the items were already at our showroom. So if they are already at our showroom, we don't dispatch them the second time for proper stock movement records in, in the company. Uh, and then for the why it's original, this is a system-generated delivery note. So when we print the... Yeah, when we print the, the original, we get a copy out of it after we have delivered. So we, we get a copy, and that's why it is a copy, because it's system generated from our system. Mm, were you the one who delivered yourself, or who delivered the goods among you? Thank you very much, Honorable Member. We have a team that does delivery. As our MD elaborated earlier, we have different departments. So under the, the finance, we have the stores, assembling, and logistics. So that's the team that does the delivery. When they come back, did you try to find out whether, why the, the delivery not, was not stamped by the ministry, the person who received it? Honorable member, I cannot be able to ascertain the internal processes of the ministry. So long as they had our delivery notes signed and the goods received notes, that was enough evidence that the team had delivered and the same could be used for payment. Uh, who is the head of? Currently, our head of. Uh, uh, by the time. Yeah, the by that time we had a member called Opio Rollins. He was the head of operations. Is this with you? No, he's, a, he's retired. Because we need to know the person who delivered exactly to tell us the situation and who received those goods. Would we rightfully say that these goods were delivered to the storekeepers under normal circumstances the accountant should have endorsed, like the honorable members are saying, this document should have the stamp of the ministry so, who exactly, what capacity is that person who received this, docu this uh, furniture? Thank you, Honorable Chair. From what we already do with different entities, all, all supplies are delivered to the stores, and that's where everything is submitted, even the invoices are submitted to stores, who later on, after they've submitted, they will continue to the next departments, which we are not sure who they give the documents after, but that's why every documentation is submitted. Uh, when these things were brought back, I think it was uh, taken to the management, which is part of you are here, mm -hmm. showing that the, the, the goods were delivered to Minister of Trade. Did you take interest to see whether the right person who signed for these goods was actually working in Ministry of Trade without a stamp. 
Honorable member, as we've already commented, on the goods received note, there is a stamp from the Ministry of Trade. The only issue is that since we've made so many copies, it's, it's not clear on the goods received note. And there is a signature of the source person and the taken co-user who issued the goods received note. If you can check on uh, index number 10. Specific procurement from the ministry. And we're also going to request for the new procurement file because they have another job. So we want both procurement files for the different contracts. Is there anything else you want to ask, Honorable Members? They are giving us their submission. Let's look at that procurement file for both contracts and analyze and report back to Parliament. Is there anything else you want? Yes? Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I think one of our two of our officers might also have some of these documents because when I joined, I found a memo from uh, David Omunyu who is the property operations uh, service person, as well as PASS, who is uh, Mr. Everest. And they were writing to the PS and saying that following the appointment of new ministers, office furniture has become very urgent. And uh, in view of the above, we request for you to release 18.29 million only to facilitate payment for the furniture, which was got from on credit from uh, Footsteps Furniture Company Limited, uh, and, and then attaches the reference for the Form 5, the performer invoices, tax invoices, delivery notes, outlining the items delivered to facilitate the payment. So I think they have all these uh, uh, documents, they, and they are here in the room, except for, for David. And all those documents, uh, for me, I have copies, so I might send us some of them in for your support to save your time. Everest. I have the Form 5. I have the Performa EFT, which was used to pay 17.36. I have uh, the, the internal memo with the subject matter of furniture for the 18 million. And I, I also have the, the total, which was about uh, 54.7 million, sir. Mr. Everest, do you wish to comment? Uh, thank you very much, Chair and the Honorable Members. What I could recall is that, uh, like PS said, when you receive the new ministers, besides the, <coughs> the many renovations on their offices, I recall that Mr. David Omunyo, like Pierre said, who is the principal office supervisor, was tasked to mobilize furniture for the ministers. That's what I can recall, Chair. We're going to internalize the documents you have submitted. So we need, like I said, we need documents regarding both. But this furniture, <coughs> Mr. Everest, had you ever gotten wind of furniture being supplied? Chair, no. But uh, what, uh, 
unfortunately, laws is not here. I heard that some minister's offices got some furniture, but personally, I have never, I've never seen it because I rarely go to the minister's offices. Honorable Chair of the Accountant at that time. What proof of delivery did you have before paying this money? Honorable Chair, the process we use to make payments is that uh, after the user department has received the goods, they write to the accounting officer requesting for authorization of payment, confirming that the goods they requested for have been supplied. And that attachment is the goods received note and the delivery note. Are received by the user department from the supplier? Is that the the normal procedure at the Ministry of Trade? If uh, footsteps brings furniture, they are delivered directly to the minister's office and received there? Honorable Chair and Honorable Member, I was uh, uh, maybe I skipped something there. A user department is the one that requests for for an item. So when these goods are delivered according to what they have said, uh, there is a stores department which receives them. Now, when they receive them, the contract manager must write informing the accounting officer <coughs> that the goods that have were requested have been supplied in good order. And that's how the payment is authorized and we make a payment. Uh, I've discovered something here which I need a explanation from footstep. Page 11. The invoice and the uh, woman has been deducted and then here in your invoice is reading exempted. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. Like we've said, we, can, we don't control the government processes. Some things are the sole discretion of government. Even when you're exempted, they can deduct. But when they deduct, it is a must to be given a tax credit certificate, which you have to, to use to support while you're filing your returns to show that the complete payment was done, though some money was withheld. Thank you. How then do you, how then do you are exempted already from, from withholding tax? And it's, I believe it is the URA who exempted you. Maybe. As they think of that, maybe the peers can tell us. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, let me just get my document. But I remember it was about 1.2 billion furniture for the whole uh, for the whole institution including uh, third floor the boardroom and also the ministerial offices 1.2 billion yes please which company is supposed to supply this furniture footsteps uganda limited but footsteps is telling us about 54 million only uh, that was the, those were the contracts before uh, I joined the ministry. But I found the paperwork, the one I've just told you, that there was some paperwork I found on my desk uh, from the previous acting PS. They were talking about this furniture, and uh, Everest and NBC were passed, had uh, written and said they had got some furniture on credit. That's the memo I have here. But for the current renovation, sir, we have 1.2 billion in relation to furniture for the whole uh, for the whole ministry. <coughs> okay, how much was paid? Actually, specifically, it is 1.19601640. 1.19601640. How much has been paid? All of it. All of it? Yes, please. Has this furniture been delivered? Part of it has been delivered, sir. 
Under what circumstances did you make a 100% payment? The circumstances were that uh, they have all the furniture and they are ready to deliver it. But because we asked them to deliver as, an, as per the finished floor, so we could not pay it in bits because if we pay it in bits and we do not, uh, and we leave it on our accounts, it would have been swept back to the consolidated fund and we would not have been able to provide furniture for the whole ministry. So you made the 100% payment? Yes, please. Did they give you a bank guarantee? Uh, no, they didn't. They didn't even need to because they said, for us, we have your furniture here. We don't want to go and incur costs of a bank guarantee. If you want it now, we deliver it 100%. So we kindly requested them to keep it at their floor in Namanve. And even if I want it now, the Mr. Chikavi said he would give it to us. But we requested him, but we don't have space. So we've paid for it 100% so that the money... We are not uh, uh, beaten for non-absorption of funds as well as losing out on the furniture for the ministry. So you got, <clears throat> you needed furniture for the, for the building. You invited Footsteps and maybe other companies. You found Footsteps was the best evaluated bidder. You gave them 100% payment even before they had delivered a single stool. Is this true? Of course, uh, uh, okay. Chair. That is, that is true. You are 100% right. And they did not even offer a bank guarantee? You see, it, is, it, is to, it would be a disadvantage to them because when you go to get a bank guarantee from a bank, you incur costs. Now, for them, they were saying, for us, we don't need to, to incur a bank guarantee because if you want your furniture, it's all here, 100%. We have everything you want. So, so if you want how to did it, you know they had all the furniture? We asked them. Are you getting into procurement now? Not at all, because as I said to you, uh, <coughs> there's a process which has been followed. We had, there were pre-bid meetings, everything was done. One. Now, when they zeroed in down onto uh, footsteps, even before we could pay, they had, the, the process was complete, and for them, they were ready to supply. So they were ready to supply 100%. But we have requested them to deliver as and when a floor is finished. So we finished the two floors, and all that furniture for the two floors has been delivered, sir. Clarification, sir. Clarification. I, I need the clarification from the PS. Is this, is this furniture we are talking about in this document, the 54 billion, 54 million. Is this furniture part of the 1.1 billion? Not at all. It's not. It's a, they are two different procurements. So this is different? It's totally different. From sir. the 1.1 billion? It's different, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now for the 1.1 billion, can you give us. Uh, a percentage, what percentage of the furniture have they delivered? When was this money paid? When exactly? Yes, Honorable. I want to ask the PS, why does she over trust footsteps? And what if they don't deliver as you expect? Who is to blame? Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Before you respond, uh, P.S., do you know that companies uh, are created, they grow, but they also die, they dissolve? So 
So if tomorrow footsteps dissolved, no, God forbid, yes. If tomorrow it dissolved, what fallback position do you have as the accounting officer to recover the money you have paid to them and they have not delivered the goods? You know, I'm feeling sorry for the procurement department in this ministry. The one there before and the one now. Because the, your method, uh, Madame Geraldine, of work, it may be, you may see it as being efficient, but it is very irregular. And it is going to put so many of these people in trouble. But you respond. It depends on how the members wish Can to I make recommendations. Third one, then it's to respond. Yeah, you know, as the government of procurement is concerned, I wish to submit that uh, the process of procurement uh, was followed as per the PPDA Act and the regulations. And uh, this was done under open domestic bidding. Uh, companies uh, responded, we evaluated, we received the uh, bids after evaluation, contract committee considered, uh, even before uh, uh, signing the contract agreement, a lot of uh, uh, due diligence were made, especially also to verify that maybe the price was, uh, was authentic. Can we have so, a copy of this contract argument, agreement? Yes. So The entire we, procurement file? Yes, Chair, we, we, shall, we shall submit, but uh, remember that this, is, uh, this was conducted under the Electronic Government Procurement, EGP, and uh, probably we shall try to download uh, as much as we can. And then uh, the contract agreement, that one was done offline, we have it. So uh, when it came to payment, yes, at the point of payment, uh, Footsteps Furniture was able to let us know that was ready to supply. However, this furniture, you know, this is an overhaul of the entire, of the entire ministry. Every officer, everybody is going to have new furniture. So we decided that maybe we, uh, we wanted to, to make payment and after delivery, but um, uh, the, 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 the civil works, the innovation works were not yet done. So uh, the ministry took an administrative decision, and given that footsteps had to confess that actually they had the furniture in place. We went ahead and said maybe we shall deliver as and when the, 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 the premises are done. But I believe that maybe if we can get where to um, uh, keep our furniture, full service should be able to deliver and then we can hold that furniture in, the, in a certain place. So you want to get a place after the committee has started asking you about the furniture? No, this, this was an arrangement that was done between If us you and could the rent plan. a container, for for the supplier, for the contractor of renovation to keep his material. Why didn't you get a place to keep our furniture? By the way, Chair, if I may answer. Mm -hmm. You know, I was told, first of all, I even wanted to maintain some of the old furniture. And then I was told that the moment you disassemble furniture and start moving it around, take it to interior as well, because I had wanted to save some of the furniture. They told me it would break during transportation. When you're screwing it back, it may not necessarily be uh, put back properly. Some of the screws would have disappeared. And then they told me that it is better that that furniture stays intact with the supplier where it is well packaged, and then it is delivered and then assembled by the actual uh, supplier as and when it is uh, ready. Because if you start moving it around, sometimes it breaks in transit. Some of it is glass. Some of it is, you know, it was some of it is fragile. So, I can't teach so we have spent 1.196 billion to procure new furniture, but we also spent in the other 570 million. We transported furniture to Entebbe to dispose it of. Thank you, Chair. 
we actually had uh, a lot of furniture. E even uh, oh, in the staircase, the staircase was full of furniture. I think this furniture had lived there since 1964, when uh, the building became, came under use. Because most of it, if you see it, I actually have pictures, you'd never think that anybody would use that furniture. It is okay, maybe the so, furniture but was when, But then you're not allowed to <coughs> again dump it, because most of it you have to account for it even on the asset register. Mm -hmm. So I could not dump it for accountability purposes and also asset trail purposes. So when you go there, you'll see a desk, it has the codes. And now when they ask, you know, what happened to this furniture? Was it disposed of? And how was it disposed of properly? And was it, if it wasn't, you know, if it was destroyed, you show us. So all that is very important, especially for accountability purposes. But um, that is a very slow process, as you know. Okay. Mean. So where is the Solicitor General's approval for this contract? We can avail that. We also have that um, clearance. Okay. We can give it to you today, <coughs> uh, immediately after here. You are aware you cannot pay. Uh, this was very irregular, first of all. Uh, here we paid 100% before we saw a single stool, and up to now we have not seen 60%. Actually, for them, they have no problem. Footsteps has no problem. The problem is with the ministry. They have given us all their information. Now we must deal with the ministry. Because the laws are being broken by the same people. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you had requested the procurement officer to have... That there is really trust because it is beyond. Thank you. Thank you very much, members. And thank you, Chair. The possibility, or the, yeah, the, the, yeah, the possibility that uh, Footsteps Uganda Limited would go bust and then uh, go with our furniture. The, the, luckily, uh, Mr. Chikabi has uh, demonstrated the company has been around for long, but only I can tell you that um, I have a feeling they will not go bust now, given the circumstances. Uh, mm -hmm. I looked at uh, the due diligence of how they've been paying their taxes in URA. I looked at their uh, financial feasibility uh, existence out of the financial services sector good enough I'm privy to such information. I did my own due diligence and I decided to take the risk as opposed to have money going back to the consolidated fund and not come back. Now on conflict of interest, no. I don't personally I don't own or have any interest in the Footsteps Company Limited. I'm meeting Mr. Chikari here in Uganda for the first time. The first time I think I met him he was telling me we met abroad on a, a different uh, forum but I, I, I don't even remember him, so I don't have any interest now. Yes, Honorable. But <coughs> as Honorable Kaimba comes in, yeah, I just want information. Okay. Well, as they ask, let me share with you what I have. <coughs> has never got any contract. Did you find any irregularities with them to help this country? No. Thank you very much, Honorable. Actually, I. I, I I never interfere in the procurement process. So my staff know about all these companies more than me. I first heard about it when Parliament started asking uh, about this furniture, which, the, which process was there before I came. Now, as, uh, when they haven't done business or got business, I don't know. I don't, I don't have anything personal on them, and I really wish them the best as a... Uh, Buy Uganda, build Uganda company. These are Ugandans doing business in Uganda and would like to support them in every way. Thank you. Furniture company is keeping the furniture for uh, which have already been paid for. And we have been convinced by the accounting officer that uh, due, due diligence has been done on this company. Even if it goes, there is no possibility of it going bust. Uh, that's the assurance we have got. But um, I just want to find out from the accounting officer if due diligence would eliminate, eliminate the risk of theft of or robbery or fire. Because in most cases, um, furniture, uh, wood, and so on. Um, have you eliminated that? And why am I going there? I'm just trying to find out 
once something is being stored in a safe place and it is usable, um, the, the concept of risk will require that apart from doing due, due diligence, you would ensure. So can you convince me who would be very concerned if anything happens, if uh, uh, insurance has been taken to secure the furniture? Thank you. Diligence actually is like in the foreseeable future of six months. It's really short term, which is less than 12 months. Now, I think if he gives us the probability of those risks happening, I think, I think the insurance underwriters would have taken all that into account. Maybe we can um, hear from uh, the MD himself, and then we, we can see how we move forward beyond the 12 months. Thank you. Auntie El, we have a showroom on Ginger Road, 26 here. We have a factory in Mukono. We have a tree processing plant in Namanvi. So we manufacture our furniture and we also import. We are also fully insured comprehensively for all our furniture. We insure our staff. We insure our vehicles for both burglary, fire, and everything. So uh, in any case, if there is fire, Joseph is fully insured. We are not going to run away because of 1.1 billion. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. We will not run away. We will fulfill our obligation. At any point, they want their furniture, we are ready to deliver. If they want it tomorrow, we are ready to deliver it tomorrow. This is our assurance. Thank you. Uh, uh, chair, 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 I'm sorry.